We're back on this Thursday evening. It is the Valley's most in-depth weather forecast video, weather for weather geeks. We didn't do a video on Wednesday because we were covering severe weather early in the evening and then we spent the rest of the evening kind of playing catch up and looking at all the pictures and videos that were being submitted to us. My apologies that we didn't get that live streaming coverage onto YouTube last evening. We had some technical difficulties with that, but we had a big audience watching us on TV and on Facebook as well with tornado warnings active for a time across parts of our television viewing area and indeed we did have two confirmed tornadoes across Northeast Ohio. Uh, we'll get into all the details here. And, you know, one of the things we were looking at very carefully was the velocity data off the Cleveland Weather Service source, or the radar source, I should say, based up near the Weather Service office in Cleveland. And this is a, a snapshot of 7.06 p.m. We have a pretty good looking couplet here, and this is right where our tornado was in Trumbull County. Here's Bristol right here, Champions down here, Southington's over here, and yeah, this circulation pretty evident on the velocity data, again, right around 706. Now this same circulation, just a handful of minutes earlier, did produce a tornado across par parts of uh, eastern Portage County in addition to what we had just a handful of minutes later over into Trumbull County. So let's uh, go take a look at what the radar was showing just a handful of minutes earlier. This was about a quarter till seven and pretty tight couplet once again near the Wyndham area and there was a tornado on the ground at this point. It crossed the Ohio Turnpike and this caused some traffic problems for a time along the Turnpike because the circulation did hit a couple of tractor trailers and caused some issues. And uh, yeah, this ended up being a pretty strong EF1 tornado. The uh, tornado in Trumbull County was EF0. We'll talk all about the uh, ratings here. Uh, this is, first of all, the eastern Portage County, in other words, the Wyndham area uh, tornado. EF1, 110 mile per hour winds. It was on the ground for about four miles with a width of 65 yards. Over in Trumbull County, uh, the winds were not quite as strong with this one, but of course we did have some pretty extensive damage along this path. It was on the ground for almost three miles. 20, uh, 20 yards, I should say, was the width of this tornado with winds of around 80 miles per hour. And you know, this part of Trumbull County is no stranger to tornadic activity in recent years. Our viewing area's only tornado in 2023 was this one right here near Bristol. Uh, this was an EF0, this was in late August. Um, a few other recent ones though, this one right here was in January, believe it or not. We had a tornado that crossed the southern end of Mosquito Lake and came ashore right around, right around to Cortland in the dead of winter back in 2019. In a more typical time of the year, back in the summer of 2019, we had a long track EF1 tornado down here that went through parts of the Levittsburg area and south of Mosquito Lake. This one that also crossed Mosquito Lake and went into Mecca, that was, I believe, in 1917. So that was a long time ago. Um, but in recent years, yeah, this has been kind of a hotbed, uh, a very active part of Trumbull County. And, you know, it got me thinking about our viewing area, there's a little bit of a perception that uh, we don't see many tornadoes in Mahoning County compared to other counties. So I looked at the numbers, just going back 10 years, we could, you know, this is kind of arbitrary, you could pick any year you want, but we just went back 10 years for this exercise. And counting the tornado that happened last evening, we've had eight in Trumbull County. Uh, Columbiana and Mercer follow up in second place with five each. Mahoning County has only had two, and there's only been one in Lawrence County. That was in the eastern part of Lawrence County a couple of years ago. But of course, not every county is the same size, so it you know stands to reason, or it makes a lot of sense that the bigger counties are going to have more tornadoes. There's just more square footage for there to be tornadoes. But so I broke it down in terms of the numbers divided by what the square footage of each county is, and despite Trumbull County being you know kind of almost tied with Mercer for our biggest county, uh, you know on uh, you know the ratio here is you know the highest in our area. There are more tornadoes per square foot in the last 10 years in Trumbull County than any of our other counties. Uh, Columbiana actually in second place followed by Mercer and then Mahoning and Lawrence. So our two smallest counties Mahoning and Lawrence have had the fewest tornadoes but at, even when you factor in their smaller size the ratio is uh, not quite as big as some of our other counties. And what a year it's been so far in the state of Ohio for tornadoes. This is what happened last evening, but going back to January 1st, look how many tornadoes there have been in the state of Ohio. Compare that to Pennsylvania where there's been none, and it's pretty remarkable. I mean, Ohio is actually leading the country right now in terms of number of tornadoes so far in 2024, beating out Alabama and Oklahoma and all those kind of tornado hotbeds. Not to say this is going to stay this way through the entire severe weather season, but so far, Ohio has gotten off to a rocking start when it comes to 
tornadoes. All right, so where's the action this evening? Uh, this is our rainmaker coming our way for Friday. It's producing severe weather this evening. It won't produce severe weather in our area. It will bring us some showers Friday morning and midday. But right now, pretty good event ongoing around the St. Louis area and just east of there with several tornado warnings. And we've had some gargantuan hail out of the, some of these storms over the last several hours across parts of the mid-Mississippi Valley. As this system shifts east tomorrow, Again, not concerned about severe weather at all. In fact, there won't be any thunder here locally. Uh, down in parts of the south, there's a low-end kind of Category 1 risk of severe weather on Friday in places like Atlanta and Charlotte and heading up towards Raleigh as well. Locally, we are going to get wet here and there, but it's far from a washout on Friday. Our rain chances peak around mid-morning, and then the showers will you know, kind of dissipate, and we'll be left with a pretty nice end to the day on Friday. I think the sun will come out Friday afternoon as this front shoves out to the east. Good looking end of the day, some clouds filter in at times uh, around sunset into the overnight, but I think these clouds will part enough that we'll see some sun at times on Saturday, but it's going to be fairly ineffective sunshine this weekend. It's pretty impressive how cool we're going to be this weekend with some sun in the forecast, considering our sun strength is, you know, kind of equivalent to late August right now. We're going to have a hard time getting into the mid-50s, both Saturday and Sunday, with cold nights as well. So daytime highs, 53, that should be about it, Saturday and Sunday. Look at those overnight lows. Now, we're still in April. It's nothing unusual to see lows this cold at this time of the year. Our average date of our last freeze of the season is like May the 6th or 7th, something like that. And so we got a ways to go until that average uh, last freeze date. And yeah, I think there'll be some frost to scrape at times uh, during the morning hours. Sunday morning, then maybe especially Monday morning, and then we might have a night or two again next week where it gets pretty cold overnight. And on balance, this is a cool looking pattern for the next about week. I think we'll turn the corner during the last three, four, five days of April. But over the next week, more often than not, we're going to be cooler than the average with the coolest weather compared to average coming this weekend and then with one more cool shot towards the middle portion of next week. Once the warmer air returns at the very end of April, I think it's here to stay for a while into early May. And, you know, we're into late April, early May. It's supposed to get warmer, of course. But climatologically speaking, compared to average, in other words, we are expecting a, a pretty prolonged stretch of warmer than average temperatures at the end of April and the start of May. And by the way, I didn't show it to you graphically, but the Climate Prediction Center did issue their initial May outlooks today. And no surprise, uh, we are favored to have a warmer than average month of May in Eastern Ohio and Western PA. Thanks for watching Weather for Weather Geeks on this Thursday evening. Hope everyone stayed safe during the weather last evening. If you were impacted by last night's storms or know someone that was, my thoughts are certainly with you. you we, we oftentimes get kind of excited about storms and they're interesting and everything like that, but you gotta remember the human element as well. That's people's livelihood. Thankfully, we didn't have any injuries or fatalities or anything like that, but some people did sustain a fair amount of damage. So our thoughts are with them. In the meantime, again, thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time here on Weather for Weather Geeks.